welcome to episode 92.5 of Big Red Barrel Geeks Pick, a place for all you geeky nudes on BigRedBarrel.com. My name is Alex and I have a very special episode for you today. This is a very special episode. A couple of weeks back I did interview with Nick and Panos from Twisted Brothers who are currently kickstarting their new game 12 Realms Dungeon Land that you can, in fact, check out on Kickstarter, huh, surprisingly. And I sat down with them and talked about mostly about their game, but also about their game dev history and the kind of games they like to play and all the other board gaming goodness. So I hope you really enjoyed this little special segment of the episode and I will see you at the end of the show with the socials. I'm very delighted to have on the Geek Speak today uh, two designers from Twisted Brothers who are designed a new game, 12 Realms Dungeon Land, and here to talk to me about it. Hi guys! Hello, how are you? Hello! <laughs> really great, how are you? We're fine, I am Panos and I'm Nick. Would you guys mind just, you know, as introductions, how come you started designing board games, what are kind of your backgrounds, and so on? Yes, uh, well... <clears throat> we are, we've both both been gamers for a couple of years now. Well, mm-hmm. not a couple. It's been like ten years almost. Yeah, I just don't want to remember that it's been so much. Anyway, uh, we we've been gamers. We've been playing role playing games a lot. We've been playing board games for a while, and we both loved it. It was our hobby for both of us. So we were always trying, you know, to play a lot. It, it was like our main focus most of the most of our free time and all that. And we thought that maybe we could do something about it, uh, make it more of a professional hobby. And it evolved and evolved, and finally we've made our own games, and we started designing. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> did you have kind of any kind of design background to help you along, or did it just come from just playing a lot of board games and saying, aha, that's a really awesome mechanic, could we do something similar or something different? Yeah, it's something between. Uh, actually, our first job was uh, to develop games of other designers so we we took uh, ideas or draft of games and we just try to fix some things or make it work better and stuff like it mm-hmm. so basically that was our first job description yeah, yeah it, it was like the first part of our job we started out as correcting other people's games basically we were taking them and we were just adding stuff to them or developing on their ideas and stuff yeah. uh, after doing that for a while we realized that uh, um, we thought that we could actually work on our own game now that we have like worked on the games of so many other people and seen how, how ideas work, how games work, how the design space and all that works. And so we sat down and we started developing our own game when like we were also like we discussed it with uh, Alex from Mid's company and the idea came down and everything and so we started on this big project called Dungeon Land. Yeah. Awesome. Um, another question that I really like to ask game designers because I'm kind of fascinated by it. What is currently on your board game table? What kind of board games are you currently playing and like obsessed with? I think we'll both tell you that's uh, D&D the 5th edition. Because we, yes. we are big role players, <laughs> yeah. and like we we love D and D, and the fifth edition is amazing. So it's our, I think it's the game we play most out of everything. Yeah, the thing is that personally, I don't have so much free time because uh, we're designing. Yeah, we're designing. <laughs> I have also a newborn baby uh, last year with my wife, so you know that the time is. It's something very, really, very yeah. yeah. But yeah, we we also play. I like to play. We both like to play. Actually, Lord of the Rings, the LCG from yeah. Fantasy Flight. We're big fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like Battle Lore and I play often. And I also very recently got into the uh, latest release, the Room Wars miniature game, which I find very good. All right, nice. That's that's quite interesting, actually. Yeah. And we, and we also play a lot of uh, lighter, smaller party games and stuff like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's like the the games that we play and we really like. We, we try out almost every game that comes out, to yeah. be honest. But uh, that's the games <laughs> that we, you know, we really tend to play on our free time. All right. So would it be fair to say that you're kind of more passionate about kind of storytelling and big games because D&D, obviously, a big part of kind of what inspires you while you... Oh, yes. Y- y- yes, of course. Of course, we are both like storytellers. So in D&D, we also we are both uh, DMs. So mm-hmm. we are the guys that make the story. And that's why most of the games we're trying to make, if we can, we like to have a story about them. We are big on fluff and on background and all that. Yeah, world building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's our main focus. We believe that uh, basically, you know, the mechanics are great, the rules and and all that. But that's basically like mathematics and numbers and how things work. And that's a main, that's like the core of the game. 
But the, all this needs to be wrapped around a very good fluff and a good atmosphere yeah. so that you can really immerse yourself into the game. Okay, great. So having said that, tell us a little bit about your game that is upcoming, 12 Realms Dungeon Land. Uh, 12 Realms Dungeon Land is a dungeon crawler set in our in the 12 Realms universe, uh, which is uh, the universe that previous games from Mage Combat were based on. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's uh, all the folklores and tales like Red Riding Hood, uh, Snow White, um, Prince Charming and all that, uh, all of these tales... It's basically the realms in which all these tales happen, the worlds in all which all these tales entail and everything. So in our previous games, we we like uh, visited these worlds on various occasions as they try to like uh, you know it was uh, like fight the tide of evil, but in a more like passive way, you know, like on the map, like globally trying to stop. Yeah, a more, a more traditional co-op game. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, on this game, we take like a much more personal view of it. You are the heroes. The players play the heroes of the stories. And it's like the worst uh, possible time for the realms. There has been an evil fog that has expanded all across the land and everything is corrupt. And the tales start to end bad. And everything like is going undone. Even like good creatures become evil. And there is like chaos across the lands, and we play the heroes in their attempt to discover what's behind all this evil and to stop it. Is there development for the characters? I'm guessing there might be, um, they get stronger, there's building up stats. Yes, yes, is yes. Because yes. as I understand, it's a kind of a campaign that progresses as you get deeper into it. Yeah, basically that was the, the, the basic idea of the game was to be heavily campaign oriented. So it will be a very heavily uh, story driven campaign included in the game mm-hmm. and you get all the the progression you expect from such a game because uh, your character will learn new abilities you'll find new weapons cool items and all that stuff but in the base game we also included uh, several other modes uh, that you can play it as a one-off play not only a campaign one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but basically our main problem was like uh, we, we really love campaign games and story-driven games and all that, but we understand that uh, especially today, not all people have enough free time to be able to yeah. meet off and to play a campaign and all that and keep continuing with the same people. Uh, so we've added, also we've included like a mode that we call Master Quest, which is basically the campaign experience in one afternoon, in like one and a half to two hours. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah it's basically, we, it's like summed up the campaign and summed up all the progression and the choices and everything in a much smaller packet. So basically in one big scenario, one huge quest, you have the campaign progression experience yeah. without having to play a whole campaign. And we've also added another mode, that's the Arena Tavern Brawl mode, yeah. which is basically, uh, it, there are three different modes of PvP, where players compete against each other, like on their skis, and it's more of a fun mode, you know, when people just want to, like, uh, you know, play with each other, like, you know, chuck dice and Yeah, fight. it's, it's, it's basically fun. a more light-hearted... Uh, arena game, yeah. yeah. arena. Mm. Battle, or, battle heavy type of play. As you said, this game is a cooperative, so you battle with other players against uh, the enemy. Do you have some sort of enemy AI setup or some set of enemy system that works within the game? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, basically, uh, monster, the normal monsters, they have like a simple AI in place, reacting to, to, some, to certain situations. Uh, most of the times they just like move and attack the enemies, the heroes as they approach and all that. But as uh, you, the game progresses and you get to fight bosses, they actually have a good AI installed for them. They have like uh, patterns and their patterns will react to different uh, hero actions and they might even change the way they act and change their patterns mid-fight depending yeah. on what the heroes do. Yeah. So they are really right. unpredictable. Yeah, I have to say, uh, when you was talking about the campaign, it actually reminded me of the other game that I quite liked. I don't know if you've heard about it, but called Mice and Mystics. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like wondering, are you like, how does the story through the campaign go? Because, for example, in Mice and Mystics, they almost have like it's like a chapter, like you're reading a book. You start by reading a little story, and then they go kind of play it out on on the board. But obviously, different campaigns work in different ways. There are various kind of RPGs in the box where um, the storytelling element is you playing through the board and discovering different twists of enemies coming along so can you kind of talk through how does your storytelling happen while you're playing the campaign uh, yes yes basically there will be an intro to introduce you to the world and the story and all that and then you begin like with the first scenario which is basically as you said it's almost like mystics uh you read a small story 
and then you play out like um, you know the continuation like it's like the story begins like the heroes arrive to the dark tower and all that mm-hmm. and you, you play that dark tower encounter then on certain events during the scenario there will also be like new small story parts as the story progresses in that like chapter for example as you said we don't call them chapter we call them adventures but yeah mm-hmm. and in the end most scenarios not all of them but most of them have like a choice so, and depending on your choice, the campaign will actually take a different turn, or your choices might affect future missions. For example, you might have a choice to save someone or leave them. If you save them, you might, they might reappear in a later scenario and do something for you, or you, there might be even like a different, complete different arc to the story. If you leave them, that something else might happen. The campaign will have four different endings, depending on All your right. choices. Oh, that's really good. That increases the replayability because you play it once and you haven't gotten the whole story so they'll come back to yes, play a campaign yes, with a different yeah. group of people or even yeah. the same group of people mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly that's why we did it we wanted to, uh, people to be able to play the campaign again we didn't want them to just buy the game play the campaign once and then be like you know don't want to play the campaign again we, we want them to, to be like we want them every time they play the campaign to get uh like the most out of it like even if they have played all different possible scenarios it can still be different because if you just change like two or three choices some scenarios will still be different so basically, mm-hmm. you would need to play around like nine campaigns to have played out everything. Yeah, and the thing is that uh, also the dungeons are random generated. All right, yes. So also, if you if you make the exact same uh, choice every time, the dungeon will not be the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the dungeon is random, the enemies are random, uh, like... Most most things in the game are generated by randomizers and stuff, so that there is replayability in the game. You yeah. won't be playing through the same dungeons, the same maps, all that. All right. As we mentioned at the start of the show, uh, you guys actually today you are starting on your Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's going live today. It's actually it's actually as we speak. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wow. Awesome. How did you decide to go for Kickstar- Kickstarter to launch your game? Kickstarter allows us basically to see. Uh, how much people uh, want to support us and to see like a first uh, feedback from the people and Mm -hmm. also uh, Kickstarter uh, allows like designers like us who don't really like have like great uh, not like the most like the most of experience or haven't like produced many games they allow us to be able to go to companies and be like you know people will support can support us and stuff like that so it will be easier for us to put out our first game until we get going with all that, and then we make the second and the third, and all these starts. Kickstarter is basically what it says. It's a kickstart. It, it helps yeah. us start on what we want to do. Yeah, and also if it goes really well, it can help us to, to add uh, some more stuff to the game. Expansions, yeah, and stuff. Kickstarter is also like a great tool because it lets you see how much people want it before even you even produce it and stuff. So if we see like a big outcry that, yeah, we like, yeah, more stuff, and like, we'll start working on expansions and all that like immediately. Because we'll mm-hmm. we'll see that there is a demand for it. Do you have some uh, stretch goals that you're considering at the moment? Yes, yes, we already have some up, and we have prepared uh, several more uh, stretch goals. We'll unlock uh, miniatures, we'll unlock new tiles, we'll unlock new scenarios, uh, uh, maybe even a new campaign, like a new small right. campaign and stuff. And there will be many surprises in the stretch goals as well that we can reveal. Yeah, yeah. Basically, people will get a lot of uh, free stuff as the campaign progresses uh, like and we smash those stretch goals there will be main stuff added to their base game actually that's an interesting point that you mentioned because well obviously without wanting to spoil uh, the story of your campaign is it very easy for you right now to add more uh, dungeons and more story bits to that story that you have at the moment just to continue keep it going yeah actually the hard part is uh, not to add too many stuff to the base game because <laughs> Ideas keep on coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At some point, we were just like we, we we kept developing, and we were just like at this, at this, at this. We have another idea, at this, at this. and at some point, we we're just like stop, stop. We we need to cut like that. That's not a game anymore. That's like uh, we're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna go to a company and be like, we we have like six games ready for you, but yeah. they are one. Also, we really want to make this clear. So there is there is a game called Twelve Realms, and you're Twelve Realms Dungeons, and you're two separate games, but you just have the same core theme. Yeah, it's the same universe. Both games yes. are basically they are the same characters. Some creatures are the same. Some places are gonna be the same. And also for our game now, uh, because we wanted to support uh, the people that have supported uh, the company in the past, the main company with the Twelve Realms series, we have we include on uh, our add-ons a conversion kit where you can use all the heroes from the previous game to Dungeonland. Oh, wow. 
wow, that's really cool. Which is like uh, the base game has six heroes, but with the pack you go up to like sixteen heroes, like straight yeah. from the back. Maybe more. Maybe more. Maybe I think more, it's like yeah. twenty or something. Yeah. I'm really excited. Actually, I really like how there is a lot of fluidity in in this game, and you know, I I think. It, one of the greatest things and one of the things that I think that I really like that you have all the different modes because a lot of the stuff that you've mentioned before, you know, we don't we don't really have that much time a lot of the times, which is why a lot of my RPG in a box games are yeah. just currently in the box. But if you can take it and get the taste for a game in kind of just, you know, your uh, special mode and go, yeah, okay, that sounds cool. I really now want to do the full campaign. I think that's that's a really cool feature that is really helpful, you know, to understand the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B- basically, we were both had this feeling like uh, I had played in the past many campaign games. For example, I have played like thousands of hours on uh, Descent 2.0. Mm-hmm. The, my problem with Descent is a lovely game. I loved it. It's amazing. But I can't get the same group of people for like three months coming to yeah. my house. It's really hard. It's really hard. Like everyone has his job. And as we grow up, we'll have like families and stuff like that as well. So things get harder and harder for gamers. And so we were like, you know, we need to include a way people can just be like, we want to play a board game this afternoon that we are four people, we'll take it out, we'll take the game out, it's going to be like a one and a half hour, two hours, and that's it. Like, we played the campaign, like, that's it, that was the game, it was nice. Yeah. yeah, actually, we try to make this game really accessible in multiple ways, not only in the campaign, but also rules-wise, we, we really try to make it uh, as simple as possible for a game w- w- that has... A campaign and a complex mechanics but at the same time we don't want people to get really frustrated with a ton of rules and all that stuff yeah exactly okay well guys all the best luck for your kickstarter it sounds like a really <laughs> fascinating you. great project and i hope it goes very well for you and you uh, obviously there'll be the links to your uh kickstarter page for this show so everyone can go and check it out thank you very much thank thanks you very a lot much. thank you a lot Okay, I hope you really enjoyed this episode. If you go down in the show notes for this episode, you will find the link to the Kickstarter where you can go and check out the game and look at its minis and read more about descriptions and videos and so on. You can also check out Mage Company at Mage Company on Twitter and MageCompanyGames.com for more of the Mage Company games. And if you would like to get in touch with the Geekspeak people, you can do so on BigRedBarrel.com. You can do so on Facebook, Facebook forward slash BigRedBarrel. On Twitter, at BigRedBarrel using the hashtag Geekspeak. You can find all your normal hosts on Twitter. Lauren is at the Switch Stream. I'm on DustinTube underscore. And Joe is at PixelRitual. Please tweet at us. Tell us what you thought of the episode. Tell us what you th- thought of the game. Okay, well, this is it for this little nice episode. We will speak at you very, very soon with a new Geek Speak episode and more geeky goodness. Thanks. Bye. Butts. You and your ears are quite welcome for the podcasting goodness that you just heard. Why not roll on over to BigRedBarrel.com for more podcasts, news, reviews, and videos from the biggest, reddest site on the internet. BigRedBarrel.com